Welcome to this YSL Excel VBA tutorial. In this part of our series on writing SQL for Excel files, we're going to look at how to select data into a new worksheet or workbook. So we'll start with a quick introduction to the Select in To statement and show how to use that to create a new worksheet in the same workbook that you're selecting your data from. Then we'll expand on that and look at how to create a new worksheet in a different existing workbook using the in clause. And finally, how to create a new worksheet and new workbook at the same time using the same statement. So let's get started. The setup for this video is very similar to the previous one in the series. We have a macro enabled workbook which allows us to execute an SQL command by clicking on this button. And when we do that, it's going to select some data from a separate Excel file called movies. Once we've selected the data, we'll insert it into a brand new worksheet. And to begin with, we'll insert that new worksheet into the same workbook that we select the data from. Then we'll look at how to create the new worksheet in a different existing Excel workbook. And then towards the end of the video, create a brand new workbook that the new worksheet will be inserted into. I've got a collection of all the files we'll need all stored in the same folder, and I'll drop a link in the video description so you can download these files yourself and follow along with me with writing the code if you'd like to. Just to show the basics of how the code works, if I headed back to the select into new sheet workbook, clicking the execute command button triggers a subroutine called create SQL command. And all this subroutine really does is builds the string representing the command we're going to execute and then passes that command into a separate subroutine. To begin with, all I've done is write a basic select statement that selects some columns from the film worksheet where the title column contains the letters STAR sorted in ascending order of title. That should be fairly familiar to you if you've been watching previous videos in this series. The execute SQL command procedure takes that string of text and establishes a connection to the movie's workbook in the same folder that this file is stored in. And then it uses our command text to set the command text property of the command object and then executes it. So no data gets written out by, um, by the command object itself. Unlike in previous videos in the series where we've populated a record set object and then written the results of the record set into a worksheet, this query at the moment, although it does select data, doesn't write out the results anywhere. You can happily head back to this select into new sheet workbook and click the execute command button as many times as you like, you won't yet see any results appear anywhere. Adding the code to write the results of our select statement into a new worksheet is surprisingly simple. If we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, in between the select list and the from clause of our existing select statement, we just need to add in the into clause. After that, we can make up the name of the table we want to create. So I'm going to call mine results. I'll stick that in some square brackets and then concatenate the continuation character to join that to the rest of the statement. And in terms of the code we need to write, that genuinely is it. At the moment, however, this command won't actually work for me. And the reason it won't work is because the movie's workbook is still open. So unlike in previous videos in the series where you're welcome to keep the movie's workbook open or closed, here it's absolutely vital that the movie's workbook is closed. Just to demonstrate that, if I tried to run this subroutine either by clicking the run button here or heading back to the menu sheet and executing my command, I get an error message. So I'm going to click OK on the error and then I'm going to close down the movie's workbook. You can hopefully clearly see here there is no results sheet yet. But having closed that down, when I now execute my command, if I now head back to the folder containing the movie's workbook and just reopen that, I will see when it does reopen, I have a new result sheet showing a list of all the films whose name contains the word star. You may have noticed that when I wrote out the name of the new table I wanted to create, I didn't end the name with a dollar sign like I normally would do whenever I want to refer to a worksheet such as film dollar. The reason for that is that in the into clause, you're not actually specifying the name of the worksheet you want to create. You're specifying the name of a named range of cells that your data will be inserted into. Just to demonstrate that, if I head back to the movie's workbook, I can find my range names in a couple of different places in Excel. In the name box in the top left hand corner of the worksheet, I'll find an item in there called results. And if I select that, it highlights the range of cells that that range name refers to. I can also find my named ranges in the Name Manager dialog box from the Formulas tab in the ribbon. I can open the Name Manager or press the keyboard shortcut Control and F3. And that shows me my results range name sitting in there as well. 
Now, as you might imagine, in the same way that you can't have duplicated worksheet names, duplicated range names can cause issues too. If I just close down the workbook, um, saving the changes, I just changed the column width, didn't I, for the title column there, I'll save that change. If I try to execute that same command again, I'll find that I get the error message telling me that the results table already exists, which is fairly sensible. So if I wanted to be able to use the same results table name again, I'd have to make sure that the results range name doesn't exist. So I can head back to the movies workbook. And when it's opened, I can delete the range name that I've just created. I don't need to delete the worksheet name. I can just head to the formulas tab in the ribbon, open the name manager dialog box, select and delete the range name, confirm that I want to do that, and then close down the dialog box. So the name is no longer available, but the worksheet still exists and all the information within that worksheet is still there. If I then close down the movies workbook and I save it, I can execute my command again to create the results sheet. If I try to do it again, I'll get the same message warning me that the results table now does exist. And then if I open up the movies workbook again, it's going to get very tedious doing this throughout the video, I'm afraid. Um, so there we go, we've got a results and a results one worksheet. So it's got the same data in each, but I only have one results range name, which refers to the new block of cells on the new worksheet that's being created. One other way to make our range name available to our select in two statement again is just to delete the worksheet that the range name points to. So at the moment, if I head to the formulas tab and choose the name manager, we can see that the results sheet, oh sorry, the results range name points to the results one worksheet. If I were to delete that worksheet, and I'll just delete the results one worksheet, just to prove this, and then head back to the name manager again, the results sheet, or sorry, the results range name now has a ref error because its worksheet no longer exists. Now that's sufficient to free it up to make it available to the select in two statement again. So if I close down and save the movies workbook and then execute my command again, it will work. And if I now reopen the movies workbook once again, we will find that we get a new results one sheet and the range name results still exists pointing once again to the results one sheet. Next, I'd like to talk briefly about ways to remove data using SQL. It's not really the subject for this video, but it does kind of fit in here. And there are a few differences, particularly if you're familiar with SQL from different applications such as SQL Server or Microsoft Access. So a standard way to remove data from a table is to use a delete from statement. You may remember from the previous video in the series that delete from isn't supported when you're connecting to an Excel workbook. So just to demonstrate that, if I close down the movies workbook, head back to the visual basic editor, I'm just going to comment out the existing SQL command statement, then just create a brand new one. Say SQL command equals delete, oh dear, I'll spell it correctly, delete from, and then the name of the table, in this case, the range name results. We could add a where clause to try to remove only certain rows that match our criteria, but delete from results would attempt to remove all the rows from that table. But unfortunately, that's not supported, as I said, when you connect to an Excel workbook using ADO. So deleting data in a link table is not supported. Okay, so an alternative way to remove things using SQL is to use a drop statement. Now a drop statement doesn't try to remove information from an object, it tries to remove the object entirely. So rather than delete from results, we could say drop table results. And there's no where clause to add here. You either remove the object or you don't. So this one will actually run. If I head back to the menu sheet and hit the execute command button, it has executed itself quite happily. But if we head back to the movies workbook and reopen that, we'll find that although it appeared to have deleted the results um, range, the results one worksheet is still there and the results range name is still there. But hopefully what you can see is that it's simply cleared the contents of that range of cells. So it almost behaves a little more like a delete from statement would work. The issue here is that it doesn't solve the problem we have, that we've got a duplicated range name. If I close down that workbook again and then head back to the Visual Basic Editor, I'm going to get rid of this SQL command and then bring back our original one 
if I try to run that one again, it's still going to fail because the result's range name still exists. So there are no good solutions here using SQL at the moment. In a future video, I may cover something called ADOX, which, uh, which will allow us to manipulate a workbook in a slightly more sophisticated way, but that's for a future video, perhaps. Just to solve this problem today, rather than manually deleting the range name and the worksheet each time, I've written an extra little subroutine that m clears up the movie's workbook using standard Excel VBA techniques. So just to show you what that looks like, it's down at the bottom of module one here. Um, it just opens up the file and then loops through the worksheets, making sure that the worksheet name is not film and then deletes it. And then once all the other worksheets have been deleted, it loops through the collection of range names in the workbook. And if any of those range names begin with a ref error, then it will delete the range name as well. So bog standard Excel VBA for each loops to clean up the workbook. So if I run that subroutine by clicking the button or just running it from the Visual Basic Editor, the next time we open up the movie's workbook, we will see that all the extra worksheets have disappeared and any range names that would have returned an error have also been removed as well. If we wanted to avoid the problem of duplicated range names entirely, we could simply try to make each range name we create unique within the workbook it belongs to. One fairly simple standard approach to making names unique is to incorporate a date time value in the name of the object you're creating. So one simple way that we could do that is in between the square brackets, just after we've added the, the name results, we could close the double quotes and then concatenate the result of a function called timer. I could then concatenate the closed square bracket to that. The timer function counts the number of seconds that have elapsed since midnight. So if I were to run this subroutine again a couple of times, you'll find that you can now run it multiple times. When you head back to the movie's workbook and you reopen it, eventually we'll see that we've generated multiple results sheets, each one with a unique name containing the count of seconds since midnight. If we wanted to make sure that this was unique to a specific day rather than just the time of the day, we could also incorporate the date into the worksheet name that we're creating or the range name we're creating. So back in the Visual Basic Editor, as well as concatenating the timer function, we could also concatenate a formatted version of the current date. So let's add in the format function, and then I want to format the result of the date function. And then after a comma in some double quotes, let's format it with four Ys, two Ms and two Ds. So it gives a four digit year, the two digit month, and then the two digit day. I can then close the round brackets and concatenate that with the timer function and then making sure I've closed the movie's workbook down again. When I execute the command a couple more times, two or three, when we head back and open up the movie's workbook again, we'll see that each of these new worksheets we've created contains a formatted version of the date as well as the time. So far, all of the new worksheets we've created have existed in the same workbook as the one we're selecting our data from. But we can also send our output worksheets to a different existing Excel file using the in clause. This is something we've used in a couple of previous videos. I'm going to close down the movies workbook and then we're going to send our new output sheet into the output file workbook. This is an essentially empty workbook at the moment. It contains a single blank worksheet called sheet one and there are no range names in there whatsoever. So I'll close that one down. To add the code to do this, we're going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And then after the in to clause, after we've written out the name of the table we're trying to generate or the name of the range name we're trying to create, we're going to have a new line down here. And I'm going to open and close some double quotes and then concatenate the continuation character just to join everything up. So what we want to do here is use the in clause. So we're going to say in. And then there are two bits of information we need to provide. So in a set of single quotes, it's the, the file name or file path. And then in another separate set of single quotes, it's the file type. So that's the basic pattern that we're going to try to create. The file type is another Excel file. And we've actually written that out already when we've created the connection string to connect to the original movie's workbook. If we scroll down into the other um, execute SQL command subroutine, we'll find in the extended properties section of the connection string, Excel 12.0 XML, and that semicolon there as well. 
So I'm just going to copy that and then paste that in for the file type parameter. For the file path, we could write out the complete file path if we really wanted to, but that seems like a lot of effort when we could happily just concatenate the file path using a couple of different bits of text, like we have again here in the execute SQL command subroutine to construct the path to the movie file. So I'm just going to copy and paste this bit of code here, and we'll make some adjustments in a moment. This workbook.path and movies.xlsx. And then rather than saying file path there, I'm going to open some double quotes, or sorry, I should say close double quotes. So we've got the in operator and the open single quote, and then concatenate that with what I've just copied from the previous subroutine. And then we simply just need to change the movie's workbook name to the name of the new workbook called output file. So I'll change movies to output file. Okay, so having done all that, if we now head back to the select into new sheet menu uh, worksheet and then click the execute command button, we'll find if I click that a couple of times or three, when we head back and open up the output file, it should have multiple worksheets, selecting data from the movies workbook, sending it out to a different workbook altogether. Now, perhaps the neatest thing about this technique is that the workbook you're writing your new worksheets into doesn't technically need to exist. If I close down my output file workbook and then again, just quickly check in this folder, I've got movies, output file and select into new sheet. If I head back to the Visual Basic editor and then just make up the name of a new workbook, I'll call it output file one, nice and inventive name. If we head back to the select into new sheet menu sheet, click the execute command button a couple of times, have a look back in that folder, we've now got a brand new output file one workbook. And if I open that up, it's got a couple of uniquely named worksheets in there too. Now we could just use the same technique we've used here to generate unique worksheet names to generate unique workbook names. So let's close down output file one, then head back to the visual basic editor. And then rather than just creating output file one, I'd like to create output file followed by the date and timer. So I'm just going to copy and paste the ampersand format date, ampersand timer, ampersand. And then inside here, where it says output file one, I'm going to stick a space in there and then close that set of double quotes and then paste in what I've just copied and then open a new set of double quotes for the end of the file name and file type. A bit difficult to read the whole thing in one single screen with, but that's what the entire line should look like. Okay, so having done that, we could once again, just check that folder. We've got output file one. That was the last file we created. Head back to the menu sheet, click your execute command button as many times as you like at this point. Each time you do that, you'll generate a brand new output file sitting in the same folder. And opening up each one of those, of course, will just show the same set of data. Each one will have its own unique range name as well. So there we go. That's how you can create brand new workbooks and new worksheets using a bit of SQL.